paying this is through the universal cloud, cloud credits, um, you can utilize them for something else, um, which is good, but you have to have something else kind of lined up to try and use that way. Um, so you, won't, you don't necessarily kind of lose it. Um, you can still utilize it as long as you have something to utilize it with because um, with the universal cloud credits, it's a set amount of money that you've applied uh, per month to be utilized. If you do not use it, you lose it. Um, and it's on a per month basis. So it's not even like uh, it used to be that if you, you had stuff to use for credits that would last an entire year. Um, that's no longer the case. It's on a month to month. So as long as you have something kind of uh, ready to slip in there and use, um, then you, you might just have to let that expire. So um, this is true, but there was those couple of extra um, things you have to uh, understand. And also it's important because someone had a question about it. Um, you do not have to pay any back support fees or penalties um, if you bring it back. And that's mainly because you've never stopped paying for support. So there's nothing really to, um, to pay there because you've been paying support all along. Okay, license mapping. Um, now this one, is, it's true. Uh, this is the way uh, when you, how are on-premise license entitlements mapped to Oracle Cloud under Oracle BYOL? And the simple answer is at a high level, one Oracle processor license maps to two OCPUs. Um, this is true, uh, but for performance purposes, uh, you want to, uh, like, let's say if you had 12 Intel, core, Intel cores of processing power uh, that you wanted to allocate to the cloud, you need to allocate six processor licenses. Um, so it's, uh, because based on the performance requirements, you're equating a single hyper-threaded Intel core to a single OCPU. So that's why that's kind of key to understand. Okay. Now this is an important one. This is true, um, but it's, it's a very you know, critical thing to understand in the fact that there are licenses that are not available um, on premise because they are only a cloud product. So there's no license to map to that. Um, so th you're only allowed to kind of do a BYOL for any licenses that will map to a service that is available not only uh, in the cloud, but also on premise. Um, so this, this list here is, uh, is an example of cloud-only services uh, that just basically have no on-premise. So there's no license you could own uh, already that you could apply to try and reduce the cost of these. So, all right. Okay. How is Oracle BYOL to, pa uh, to pass impacted by the new Oracle UC model? Now, this is what we'll talk about universal credits. Um, it's different because the universal credits are the method in which you pay uh, for the services. BYOL, all that means is that you're taking on-premise, uh, your on-premise investment, and you're applying it against as-a-service um, services to reduce that cost because you're already paying for the support and you own the license for the product you want to utilize as a cloud service, right? And, and to also kind of reiterate the platform as a service, that's really where Oracle is kind of running things and managing things with that platform, right? It's different than the infrastructure as a service where you are more um, kind of taking care of it yourself. You're loading it up. The only thing you're getting is the infrastructure. Um, but you're managing. Um, you're not managing the hardware, but you know, unless it's bare metal, um, but you are managing um, the loading the software and so forth and um, 
such. With the platform, it's all them. Um, they're managing it. It's at certain versions. It's at the kind of the latest versions. It kind of uh, moves along to the latest versions as you go along. So you don't really have control over to say, hey, I don't want to go to the latest version. You're kind of dragged along. Um, so that's just one of the aspects of, aspects of uh, platform as a service. Um, now, the, the key thing with universal credits to understand is when you purchase universal credits, um, you're buying a set amount that is going to last for a particular term, and it's going to be drawn out over the course evenly over a year. So let's say you're going to pay $1,000 uh, a month, $12,000. It's evenly broken up across the 12 months. And then as you use those services, it will decrement off of that, right? Because the, with the advent of the universal credits, non-metered and metered went away. And universal credits is essentially metered. And that's all you're being offered for anything new you buy now. Is That's what you get. So with that, when you're taking that uh, $1,000 and you're decrementing off of it, if you don't use it all in a month, it doesn't roll to the next month. You lose it. So if you, you, if you uh, utilize $800 worth of that in a month, then you lose $200. Um, should you utilize more, more than $1,000, um, you will instantly get billed uh, new costs. And with uh, PAS, it's, it's 1.5 times. Um, uh, it's the pay to go fee, which is uh, basically kind of the, the list, you could say. Um, the more expensive fee that for any hours over. So you're kind of getting hit harder if you use too much and you're getting losing if you don't use enough. Also, it's even, and you know the difficulty with that is most organizations have hot spots in their year. They have you know portions of their year retail. You know, typically your Thanksgiving through Christmas is very busy. Um, you're going to have an increase there. It's a challenge, um, and uh, it's it's unclear at this time whether Oracle is going to change anything with that. But I know that it's 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 a concern among many people because. It, they know that clients are going to want to spend more during certain months, but this this model at this point doesn't really support that. Um, so that's uh, that's a key thing to remember. Okay, next one: uh, the annual support. Yes, customers have to continue to pay. Like I've said, this is another one of those repeats. Um, yes, you do. So you'll continue to pay support uh, on those licenses. All right. Database editions, um, specifically to standard edition, and uh, the on-premise license entitlements for all the standard editions uh, are mapped to the Oracle Database Standard Edition Cloud Service. A um, little extra information in regards to that. Um, where processor license is counted equivalent to an occupied socket, every one processor license covers the use of the program on four OCPUs. Um, the socket limit still refers to the version of standard edition. So standard, regular standard edition is four sockets. SE1 and 2 are two sockets. So it does math to it, but you do have to follow uh, the, limit, the limits of it from your uh, from what you bought on premise. Okay, license mixing. Can a customer mix license included PAS and Oracle BYOL to PAS in the same provisioned instance? Um, you can't. Uh, that's why it's kind of an all or nothing. Um, you, you can't mix them because if you've got a couple of your licenses on premise that you want to apply, but you don't have all of them, they can't allow you to just use a certain portion for that, and then the other portion you're getting full PAS services for. 
that's just they're not set up for it um, and you can't use it that way. So that's um, a key thing to remember. Okay. Um, with a license included PaaS, uh, customers can simply scale up or down or charge hourly for renting the service. Um, so with this one, this is this is true um, in this answer. You know, the same capability exists um, with the Oracle BYOL. Customers must bring a license to tie them on. This kind of gets to the fact that it has to match. Um, you can't not match it. And then if if um, specifically the universal credits, if you need to scale up and so forth, you're you're getting those extra charges, and that's where that 1.5 times pay go comes into place, and you know that that's how you can do it. So there there is some scaling, but um, it's uh, it's the scaling is mostly limited uh, in regards to the way the universal credits are set up, more than anything. Okay, this one. All right. Um, now, this question was specific to because this one was definitely one of those questions that is actually wrong on Oracle site. Um, the question here is, if I've what was implied here was well stated here was the fact that if I only had Oracle database and I wanted to apply it into the into the platform as a service. Um, because platform as a service is sold kind of in tiers, so you with a, a low tier, you're going to be getting things like diagnostics, back tuning, pack, and other options. Well, if you don't already have them on uh, premise, uh, Oracle is saying here that yes, uh, you will get them as part of it, even though you don't have them BYOL on premise. Uh, that is not true, and, and we confirm that with Oracle. I mean, any time that something looks a little off in regards to the way um, Oracle looks like they're offering something for free, um, we always question that um, because there's generally a deeper story behind it. And in this case, this was actually wrong. Um, you, it's the same as I, I uh, the infrastructure as a service. You have to bring all of the licenses that you want to use in the cloud, you have to have them all already on premise. Um, and it is the same thing for platform as a service. Okay. And this also touches on the same thing. This question is talking specifically to the BYOL, and it's kind of making the statement that, no, no, you, you, you do, it's not the same thing, um, but they actually are uh, for both infrastructure as a service and platform as a service, um, you have to be bringing all the licenses that you need. Now, has Oracle kind of like implied, talked about the possibility of that changing the future? Yes, but that is not the rule right now. That is not, and it's, it's Oracle has been changing their licensing literally ever since for cloud, ever since they came out with it. Um, there's always been tweaks and changes and um, some major. So, um, but at this stage, that's not the way it works. So that's particularly important to understand. Okay. Oracle, uh, can Oracle Unlimited License Agreement customers certify licenses BYOL to Oracle Cloud? No. Now this is a key um, question because we run through this a lot. ULAs, um, particularly in the last two to three years, ULA contracts automatically include license, that license uh, language that indicates you are not allowed, you can utilize some of your licenses against cloud environments, even AWS and so forth um, during the term. Um, their language tends to kind of allow that. However, when you certify at the end of that ULA, um, the default language is that you cannot um, utilize them after that. So if, if you all of a sudden kind of allocated a bunch of licenses that you BYOL'd to Oracle Cloud from your ULA contract, during the term you can do it, but once you go to certify, then all of a sudden 
uh, the surprise is that, okay, well, if you want to continue those services, you have to pay over and above, no longer BYOLing it. You're going to literally have to pay for the full um, platform as a service. Now, with that said, Oracle wants to beef up its, its, or its uh, cloud client base. So are they going to kind of slam this at you? It's a point that wouldn't need to be negotiated, but the base um, rule is that no, you cannot utilize it that way. So is that would definitely be something that would have to be negotiated. Okay, now we're getting to some audience questions that I want to get to. So uh, one of the questions was, first question was, what are the restrictions and capacity issues on BYO licenses? Uh, this was honestly just reca re um, captures what we've been saying all along in this because there really there isn't a um, really the only restriction is that for the instance that you want to create in the cloud you need to own the on-premise licenses for all the features uh, options and packs and so forth that you're going to be using with it so that you can apply them all um, and it also has to be a license that's available on-premise and then maps um, to an available cloud service uh, any of the capacity restrictions in regards to um, just instant size and, and, and so forth are all essentially the same thing that uh, Oracle's cloud services would support anyway. Uh, and they're always kind of expanding that. Um, so that changes often because they're always trying to kind of be able to uh, give people more and more. Um, so there really isn't uh, a limit. It just depends on do you have the licenses to shift. Okay, next question. Uh, when does BYOL make sense and how do you justify championing it within your organization? Um, I had a couple questions around this, so I kind of melded them together. Um, the difficulty here is this type of question has a lot of answers because uh, it depends on your particular situation within your organization. Um, a lot of companies have developed a cloud first strategy, um, which just means they're going to consider cloud first for any new solution that they're trying to um, they want to implement uh, but if it can't if they can't uh, make that work then they will go and utilize it on premise now why wouldn't it work well you know there's a lot of reasons um, lots of times if a new solution needs to leverage data uh, from an on-premise database even though you're trying to put some of it in the cloud uh, latency issues can occur so typically, you really only want your systems that are going to need to be talking together often in the same area, right? So they don't either all be on the in the cloud or they'd all be on premise. Kind of mixing it, you can mix some stuff due to hybrid cloud capabilities, but not something that needs to talk constantly because then the latency issues can become too much. Also, long-term cost. Um, perpetual licenses. You, know, you pay the license cost up front and then support from then on. Uh, cloud is licensed and support forever. So, you know, over time, you're going to end up paying more um, in the cloud. But, you know, you're, you're not paying for hardware. There's some, you know, maintenance in regards to that. So you're not paying for any of that. There's other things that you're kind of getting with that power and so forth. Um, but some people don't always kind of realize that yeah, well, in the end, I'm actually going to be paying more for that. Um, and that's also expected to kind of, as cloud is, is used more and more often, we expect those prices to, to rise, as, as we've seen in many different services has already been the case. Um, also, some companies want to maintain a certain level of options. Um, and cloud use can potentially cut down on those options. You know, obviously, since you get yourself set up in the cloud and everything's kind of set when you're trying to make a change um, it's not always that easy to make that quick change to if you need to shift to a different cloud vendor um, you just you don't have as many options because you've you've got a term right whereas on, on site on uh, on premise if you came into a situation where you were like you know what company's hitting hard times we need to just uh, drop support for now just uh, steady state our licenses as we're going, and we're just kind of, you know, kind of just use what we're using until things turn around. Well, 
you can do that with on-premise licenses. Cloud license, you can't do that. You have a subscription. So you're paying that subscription till the end, and if you decide to drop it, you no longer have access to that. So it's not like you can kind of continue steady state for no cost. So it's those kind of things that, that need to kind of be considered. But if a cloud solution does make sense for the business, um, then what you want to do is leverage any on-premise licensing that you may already invested in um, so that Oracle uh, BYOL is meant to help with that. Um, because at this stage, there's no um, way to um, utilize, well, actually, this is part of the next question. I'm going to go to the next question. Okay. What are the rules to transfer existing Oracle database licenses to Oracle Cloud migration? Um, Oracle no longer offers a method of training uh, in your on-premise licenses for cloud services. They used to. You used to be able to kind of trade them in for credit, and you'd get a, an amount of credit that you would burn through. It was a, a method through their, um, their metered before. They no longer offer that. So there's really no way to take what you had on uh, premise and migrate them uh, to that service, right? BYL OL is one of three main methods, right? So if you want to utilize platform as a service, you can utilize the BYOL. You can also shelve support, um, which is a little different. That comes to saying, okay, I'm going to take a certain amount of licenses that I own, and I'm going to shelve it. I'm going to stop paying the support. And you do this in a formal fashion, so you just don't stop paying the support. You've got to work with Oracle on it. But um, you shelve the support, and then you have to – you can – shelve as many licenses as you're buying through the platform as a service cloud services. So this enables you to save the money on the support, but you're paying it for the platform as a service. So uh, it used to be they'd give you a discount when you did that against platform as a service. That no longer exists. So it's just, you're really just kind of putting it there, and that, it's not a bad idea because it does give you some option that if the cloud services don't work out so well for you, then you can make the switch back to on-premise and uh, bring those licenses back to life. Um, so it's not a terrible thing. But again, when you get a platform as a service, cloud services contract, it's, it's a term. So you know, you've got that, you gotta use, you gotta pay for that to the end of that term. Um, and finally, you can BYOL to Oracle Infrastructure as a Service Services. It's very similar to um, AWS, Azure, um, any of those platforms that are just providing compute. Uh, you're going to still pay for your support completely, um, but you're going to apply them. And when applying it against Oracle, like I mentioned before, it's essentially the same amount of licenses you would need for the compute power as you would on-premise. Um, whereas with Azure and AWS, it's twice as much. Um, and then this is my last question is the, uh, what's the reason behind Oracle's decision to only certify AWS and Azure as cloud IIS providers for running BYOL Oracle software? Um, essentially here, is uh, really the only answer here I have for this is the fact that um, it's considered by many um, that those two services are the top two leaders uh, in the industry uh, for those type of services. So Oracle sees them as their main competition. Competition. So that's why they'll create things like they've done with their policies that that make those unfavorable requirements to utilize their services because they want you to utilize. Oracle Cloud. Um, so, so that's kind of key. There's no really other reason that um, Oracle has supplied or talked about from that, but it makes the most sense in regards to the way Oracle typically works. So uh, that's all I have. All right, thank you, Wayne. I uh, just want to remind everyone that if you didn't get a chance to have your question answered, 
or if you would like to discuss anything in a one-on-one -on -one situation regarding should you move to the cloud, is it a good time for your company, uh, what assets do you have that would be uh, good for the cloud and what assets might you want to keep on premise, we'd be more than happy to talk to you. You can contact us at Miro at sales at MiroConsulting.com. Call us at 732-738-8511, extension 1208, or reach us on the web at MiroConsulting.com. If you want to join us, this concludes the webinar. Have a great day.